Hey, I'm Katrina, welcome back to my channel. Today we're actually at home again. We're in my spare bedroom, which has now become a bit of a plant room. <laughs> and today I'm gonna to tell you all about my indoor greenhouse IKEA cabinet. So in this video, I'll tell you about why I'm growing in a cabinet, where my inspiration came from. I'll tell you all about the things that I've bought, uh, including all the accessories inside and i'll put lots of links in the description box below for more details we'll have a bit of a plant tour show you what's growing in there and just generally talk about how things are doing in my indoor greenhouse cabinet so why am i growing in a cabinet it seems a bit of an expensive way to go about things so let me tell you a bit about my sort of situation and thoughts on raising seedlings here at home so where i am I'm in the UK, centre of the UK, where it's still quite cold. I like to start my chilies, um, particularly quite early on in the season, when the light levels are still quite low. Can't grow them outside because it's still really quite cold as well. Um, so I start my seedlings, quite a few of them indoors at home before I move them to my polytunnel on the allotment. Now I live in a city centre flat, which means space is a premium. This room, as I said, is sort of like um, a spare bedroom, but I use it for a lot of different things. It probably only measures not much more than three by three meters. So it's quite a small room. Um, it's where I grow a lot of my plants, but also I may have visitors stay here, but we don't keep a bed up all the time because I like that sort of flexibility of space. I like to use space for different things. I'm always moving plants and things around. <laughs> I don't have windowsills. I live in quite an old building. It doesn't have, well actually it has two windowsills but they're tiny and they don't have the best light. Um, certainly not big enough for the amount of plants that I grow. <laughs> so I needed something um, to grow them in or on. So I've got this cabinet which gives me multiple shelves for multiple levels and it's got grow lights in it so I can put it at the back of the room where it otherwise get the lowest amount of light and it's all enclosed it keeps up its humidity it keeps the pests out <clears throat> hopefully I won't get any pests in there though because otherwise that could be an issue and just generally it increases my space now I know that you can get sort of like um, greenhouse cabinets that are green and they've got that big plastic cover on and some people use those inside their homes. You also get grow tents, particularly with um, chili growers, those big black boxes that inside you put your lights in and they're sort of foil lined to get all that maximum light. But they look really kind of ugly and they take up a lot of space. So I wanted something that was um, practical, functional, but also aesthetic so that I can look at it and it becomes part of the room. And also if I have visitors that still come to stay in here, they are not gonna be um, knocking over my seed trays and I'm not gonna get anxiety because of that fear. <laughs> Nothing worse than accidentally knocking your tray and it falling to the ground. So they're safe in there. This cabinet has doors on it, um, even has a lock on it. So you can keep your children or visitors away from your precious plants it keeps them safe they're enclosed so those are some of the reasons why i've decided to get this cabinet so what gave me the idea well i have to hold my hands up and say it's not my idea a lot of the setup and features and accessories in here um, i've acquired from other people that are sharing their setups as well so i don't know if you grow your own house plants i am quite a big houseplant fan. I have quite a few of them here in my flat um, and there's this trend that's sweeping across the houseplant community at the moment. Particularly in America it's now sort of spreading across Europe and the UK as well and that is to grow your houseplants in this cabinet so it becomes a huge feature in the room and it looks amazing and some of the setups that people have are just so good. Uh, but I want to give a few shouts out to people that have inspired me. So first of all is the plant interior decorator. She's based in Canada, has an amazing houseplant YouTube channel. Go check her out and also an Instagram as well. And she's got a fantastic setup that I've pretty much sort of recreated um, alongside um, Babylon plants, your Babylon plants. Um, he's based in the UK. Um, so yeah, thank you to you two. But also, if you're looking to go down this rabbit hole 
of a project, you have to check out the IKEA Greenhouse Cabinet Instagram page and also the hashtag as well, where you'll find everyone's um, cabinets that they're sharing. That's like the place to go. They've got lots of stories and highlights that you can check out on different supplies and accessories and setups. Um, yeah, so huge thank you to all of you guys. Um, I'm basically taking that idea, but using it for growing my seedlings. And I will continue to use it throughout the summer months because my polytunnel, when I'm growing my chilies and my tomatoes, they take up a lot of space. So I don't actually have any room for shelving in the summer months for more seedlings. So I can start them off here and then move them to the plot and plant them out after them, acclimatizing them to the outdoor conditions for a while. Um, and also in the winter months, I can still, you know, I can carry on growing things like herbs, like my basil that likes a lot of light, which we don't have in the winter months. It gets really dark. Um, and also if I want to give my house plants a bit of a pamper, a bit of a spa day, I can put them in the cabinet where the humidity will be really high and they'll get all that light that they need. So let's talk about the cabinet itself. What is it? Where was it from? So I mentioned already it's from Ikea. It's called the Millsbo. It's also available in black. It was £165 at the time of purchase. And they also do a much shorter, wider version as well. But the houseplant community are also using loads of other different types of glass cabinets, some of which are from Ikea, like the Fabricor, I think. And there's a couple of others. Um, but you know, loads of other people are just DIYing it, using whatever they can if they're on a budget. Um, it's just great to see what everybody else is using as well. The cabinet's made out of metal and glass and the doors open really quite wide. And I love it because they don't open at 90 degrees, they go a little bit wider so you can really get into the cabinet and um, tend to all of your plants. The setup went really quite smoothly. Um, I would recommend that it's a two person job. My boyfriend kindly helped. and We got it done within an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, but we will get on to cable management in a moment because we did have one issue, which was drilling a hole in the base of the cabinet through the metal for the cables to go through for all of the accessories that we've got in here. The tall mills bow comes with three glass shelves. I have only used um, one of them because I obviously want that height uh, but you have three to play with and you get supplied these little corner brackets that hold and support the shelves so you can just really customize it to the height and level that you want. Some growers are using wire mesh shelves that they're getting cut down to size and replacing their glass shelves with those um, for the reason being that they want to increase the humidity and airflow between all of the shelves but for me, since I've only got one and I have a fan on each level, I find that this is working fine for me so far. Now the doors themselves have um, a magnetized closing system. So once you get it quite close, it does snap in, which is great. And also it comes with a lock and key to keep your plants safe and <laughs> away from thieves, children, cats. Um, you know, it's a good way of keeping them enclosed away from those sort of accidental damages as well. The grow lights that I'm using are from Spider Farmer. Thank you very much to Spider Farmer for sponsoring this video and for sending me these lights to try out. It is the SF1000, which goes up to 100 watts and it comes with a dimmer switch, which I love, so that you can change the brightness that they output Ooh, is set to. Obviously, mind your eyes, don't look directly at those LEDs because they are super bright. These are the Samsung diodes, so they're really high quality. They've got a waterproof um, coating across the top. And I've been so pleasantly surprised by this um, light because, well, first of all, it's really flat and thin. I thought it would give off a lot of heat, which is why I'll show you inside in a second, but I thought I'd need my fan set up really high to dissipate that heat. But there's not a lot of heat coming off it, just enough to keep the cabinet, woo, nice and warm but you know it doesn't get hot it isn't loud because there isn't a fan inside it and um yeah i've currently set it to just below 40 on the output so that's about 40 watts for my seedlings and then as they get bigger and older 
I'll turn that up to perhaps about 60 and I might only go up to about the 100 watts in summertime. I will be growing a few dwarf chilies and tomatoes in here this year as an experiment so if I want them to fruit you really need maximum light so I might crank it up to the 100 watt at that stage. The lights were super easy to attach and set up, you just hook in the wire supports and then you can also attach the little rigging system so that you can adjust the height with their easy sort of pulley system. Um, I've currently just set mine up so far with these magnetic hooks which can support a weight of eight kilograms. The grow light itself is only one and a half so I find this works really well for me so far and on the lower shelf I have some sticky suction hooks which also take a weight of eight kilograms. You can also daisy chain them so that they're both running at the same power. Um, I haven't used that for mine because I have my accessories set up with a smart power strip which I'll tell you all about in a moment. So they are on a timer, they come on at 7am in the morning and they go off at 7pm at night. So at the minute they're set to 12 hours. That may go up to about 14 hours as the plants get bigger but at the moment that's working for me and it's really important remember to make sure you're not running your grow lights in the night time because plants still need darkness to sleep to sort of reset for the night a bit like how you know we need to have sleep so do our plants so make sure you're not giving them daylight all day i've mentioned before how much i love them because they're that white light i'm really not a fan of the bluey purple grow lights that you have because that kind of colour just messes with my eyes and as I mentioned this is a multifunctional space. I like to sort of tend to my plants, I like to spend time in here, it's kind of like a quiet um, downtime for me after a busy day at work I'll come here and water my plants. A few people have asked me what the cost of running these lights are and um, because they're LEDs they're much more energy saving than your fluorescent um, lights. Uh, but it does depend on what level you have them set at. So at the minute mine are at 40, which is approximately 40 watts. Um, so at one light, I'll be paying 39 pence per kilowatt hour. So you times that for 12 hours a day, which means I'm paying for one light 19 pence per day, which is about £5.70 a month for one light. So you're looking at about £10 a month for both lights as it currently stands. So you know you've got to weigh that up depending on your money situation uh, for me um, I love my plants and this is going to be a worthwhile investment so let's talk accessories because that's one of my favorite things in here in fact I'm just going to turn down the brightness so that you can see inside a little bit better so at the back of my cabinet I have this pegboard and this is part of the IKEA Scadis range which also includes the pegs, the little pots and containers and I also need to get hold of, they do like a little tray which you can use like a shelf and I think that'll be really really um, good for, I've just realised my basil's not there, one second. I've just watered my basil and I don't tend to water my plants in the cabinet. Um, this is obviously from a supermarket, I'm growing it to take some cuttings from it soon um, so I've just been giving it a little bit of a spa day in the cabinet. Back to the accessories, um, yes most of them are from Ikea, I want to get the little shelf um, but this pegboard is attached to the cabinet with the accessories supplied so there's like a screw which is hidden under this little note and that sort of screws into the metal, what do you call it, it's like a support at the back of the cabinet where you also support the shelves um, I did actually put a couple of washers behind to sort of give it a bit of distance because the attachments have a little peg at the back and they need to have some space to hang and support. So yeah, these little pots are great for holding um, small plants. I've also got here my ThermoPro thermometer uh, which tells me the current um, humidity and temperature and also the maximum that it's reached. Um, my cabinet tends to stay at around 55 to 65 percent humidity which is brilliant and also the temperature tends to stay within 22 to 26 degrees C depending on how warm it is 
generally and also if the sun's coming in and warming the room. You can pick these up really quite cheaply now and I do actually need to get a second one for the lower shelf so I know if they're about the same or not which would be good to know. Um, <laughs> I've also got a little bit of fly paper in here at the minute because I did have an outbreak of fungus gnats um, but that sort of sorted it out quite quickly um, so that's great to have. I've also found these pegs really quite useful for reminders um, <laughs> because and I did actually sow my tomatoes on the 15th, so it's working. Um, just a great way of setting yourself little reminders so you don't forget, because I am in here quite a lot of the time. They don't, my plants don't need watering every day, but it's, if you're growing seeds, you know what it's like. You're checking in on them all the time, aren't you? I have one fan on each level and mine are AC Infinity. I'll put the links below. Um, and it's a nice compact flat size and these fans are great because they can cope with a higher humidity. Um, I think it goes up to sort of like a 70% um, humidity that they can cope with, I'm pretty sure, I can't quite remember, um, which is obviously quite important because this environment is going to get quite moist in the air. I did originally have this set up along the side of my cabinet um, thinking that I'd need to dissipate the heat from my light but actually the light doesn't get that hot and it's really important to have a bit of a air circulation going on in the cabinet because the air is going to get really fusty and plants need fresh air to photosynthesize and breathe and also if you're not circulating that air you're going to get some issues such as mold, mildew, you might get root rot and um, you just don't want any of that so I actually vent out the cabinet for um, I probably open the doors and leave them wide open for about half an hour each day, sometimes morning and night, just to get a good circulation going through. And I keep the door open in this room. Should also really have a fan in the room, but I don't at the moment. Having those fans on, and I keep them on 24 hours a day, by the way, um, it sort of mimics the wind and that signals to the plant that it needs to anchor down so that it doesn't blow over in the wind and what it does is it encourages root growth which is really important and also creates a bit of a stronger stockier plant. I also have a heat mat which I don't currently have in the cabinet, it was for a little while but now that space is taken up with plants that no longer need to be on the heat mat. I purely use it to germinate my seeds such as my tomatoes, my chilies. I've also got a couple of loofers on the go at the moment um, outside the cabinet and as soon as they germinate they'll be moved in here when I've made some space. <laughs> All of my um, electrical functions are plugged into a smart strip. Uh, which I can control through Alexa or through my phone on a special app. I have them set on a timer and it's just a great way because I don't have to think about it. I don't have to stress or think, you know, I get to work and then realize, ah, oh, I haven't switched my grow lights on and they're all gonna grow really leggy because they're not gonna have the right light. Um, it's all automatic and it just takes that stress away. Now talking about the electrics and cable management, because I like the aesthetic that much, I really don't want to be looking at cables going all around the cabinet, especially because some of these accessories are black and have black cable in front of a nice white cabinet. I kind of wanted to hide and disguise them as much as possible. So you'll find that the cable for this light r runs behind the panel. It then goes into some of this stripping, which I believe is called trunking. Um, so it hides it there and then there is a little gap behind the shelf where the cable sneaks and then it runs down back into the trunking again. So anyway, let's have a little tour around both levels and see what's growing and talk a little bit about my setup. So if I open the doors and we'll start on the top level. We've got my spider farmer grow light there at the top with a little bit of airspace above it. And then we've got my pegboard, the Scardis pegboard. My basil that smells amazing. Supermarket basil that I'm gonna propagate um, with cuttings. I recently bought an Oxalis triangularis purpurea from um, Harriet's Plants. And it came with this lovely little um, care tips and advice 
which I'm just keeping up here at the moment because they're nice little reminders like my so tomatoes <laughs> so what was it now 53% humidity 20 degrees obviously I've had the doors open but that's my little thermometer usually have my pen in here my plant label pen that's uh, been misplaced so my tomatoes the other day <laughs> there's my fan whirring which you can adjust by the way it has like um, different controls so you can set it at different spans fan speeds mine is set to medium and here we've got my little tray system so <laughs> when I started to realize that I was running out of space um, I realized I could actually set two trays up as long as I had a bit of height so I've just used this empty plastic storage box to raise it up so I can have another tray. So in this seed tray, I mean, look at all those seedlings. These are my two house tomatoes. This is a dwarf tomato that I'll keep indoors and it will only grow to about 12 inches high and it should fruit indoors. So that's why it's quite nice and compact and sturdy. So I have two of those, which I sowed um, beginning of February, I believe. And then we've got my Ucha cream chilies. These are the ones that are variegated and also quite dwarf. I was really worried the other day because I suddenly spotted the white marks on the leaf. I thought, oh God, no, have I got thrips? And then I realized, oh no, it's just the variegation. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so yeah, I have lots of chilies on the go. My RG mango chilies, they're gonna taste amazing. Habanero type. We've got some KN because I like the powder and I'm going to hopefully create my own cayenne powder this year and then black Hungarian which will grow it sort of looks like a jalapeno but it'll be black and on the next tray down these are ready to go out into the polysanol to be honest my lettuce um, catching the breeze there and this is the Lolo Rossa variety and we've also got more peppers, sweet peppers, Aleppo, and lots of little basil, purple basil as well on this shelf. And as we go down to the next shelf, another grow light there. And then here we've got little accessories for my hooks and hanging things, my plant labels in this one, and two of my carnivorous plants that both desperately need some water. <laughs> Can't remember the name of this one actually. My little sundew, which is doing a good job at catching all the flies with its little sticky leaves. I will give it some water today, some rain water, because they don't like tap water. And here we've got some my houseplant cuttings and they're absolutely loving it. There's a new leaf there and I just noticed we've got the beginnings of a new leaf here on the Philodendron Brazil. I am keeping a close eye though because they are quite close to the light and I don't want them to burn. <laughs> and on the lower level I did have my um, heat mat down here until I needed the space for the seedlings and so now I've got a new cutting that I recently propagated. Um, some lettuce seeds. These are a secret mix from real seeds, I think. Possibly vital seeds, I can't remember. Um, they need pricking out soon. Uh, oh yeah, Argy mango in a pot. So this is gonna be a bit of a experiment this year. I'm gonna try bonsaiing some chili plants. They call it bon chi, um, just a little experiment to have a bit of fun really um, and then at the back we've got my ginger and Ucha cream is growing in its own little bonsai pot so we'll see how I get on with that I mean it could fail miserably um, <laughs> I could forget to water them and it all goes wrong we shall see um, but again I raised it up again so that I can fit more plants in and at some point I'm gonna have to put my tomatoes in here I've got no idea where they're gonna go. <laughs> but yes, I've grown far too many chilies. The, the germination was just much more successful than I imagined. So over here we've got Kapia pepper, Kashmiri pepper, Madras chili, 
um, jalapeno because I love jalapenos pickled and jarred and then pusa jawala which is like an Indian chili and this one here is bigger because it was self sown in the pots I tried to overwinter the original parent plant looks a little bit yellow in this light it's not as yellow as it looks honest <laughs> and there's a reason why the leaves are curling and that's because this one is ready to be potted up if I just get it out of the pot I want to take a look at the roots so yeah this is now ready to go into a 13 centimeter square pot um, yeah definitely ready to be potted on this one's called Bubba it's quite sweet I grew it last year and I'm so pleased because you know I couldn't overwinter the parent plant but this little one popped up in the compost below it so yeah dead happy to be growing it again well yeah the chilies are loving life I've been keeping a close eye on them trying to figure out if they need more light if I should lower the light or increase um, the height of these so that they're closer but spider farm I recommend a distance of about 18 inches between your light and your seedlings because they're still quite young and these lights are terrifically bright um, so yeah they're all looking really quite good dead happy with the growth on these I'll just close the doors for a moment to show you um, this is a chili plant that I grew last year that I've actually managed to successfully overwinter and I'm so pleased because it's the first time I've overwintered a chili plant and I think it's oh where did the label go I think it's bohemian goat but I can't be sure and I'm just so happy because it's absolutely I don't know if you can see there it is covered in little buds and the flowers are now coming as well so I'm hoping to have lots of early chilies for the first time and I'm just so thrilled <laughs> so I'm keeping this just outside the cabinet because it's too big to fit in it but the lights um, they actually spill you know for about three by three feet so by having it on the ground here it's still it's still getting enough light to flourish and I might actually start feeding it as well soon since it's going to be fruiting so the cabling runs all the way down here behind the shelf there's a little gap at the back where I've cut the trunking and it runs all the way down in the trunking to this hole which was oh the biggest problem of this project <laughs> it took so much effort to drill this hole um, because my drills not really strong enough we had a special attachment that creates a big hole like this it's called a hole saw and I've attached this grommet which all of the cables then go through and down into the um, smart um, strip and so I've just used that to sort of conceal it a little bit and keep the humidity in but it's really important that you do cover this edge because it leaves quite a sharp metal edge and you have to go through two layers of the metal it's like a double double base and um, you know you don't want that sharp edge to cut your fingers or to cut the cables as well if it rubbed at all you know you could have some electrical issues there so there you have it that's my indoor greenhouse IKEA grow cabinet that I have um, and I'm really enjoying it I'm enjoying the sort of new sort of learning process I need to keep a close eye out for any pests because even though it's enclosed and away from any pests that might be on my house plants if I have an outbreak in there it could go disastrously wrong quite quickly so I am very vigilant looking out for pests and um, it's just a great new experiment and a new hobby in itself looking after this it's bringing me a lot of joy um, really enjoying it and of course you know you don't have to spend this sort of money on it you can make your own version or just stick to how you like to grow your own seedling you know it's just a, it's a little project side project for me this year and um, it's really working so far so I'll keep you posted keep you updated on how the plants are doing and how I'm using it in other ways throughout the year as I mentioned I will put lots of links and things in the description box below if you want to check those out um, but yeah thanks very much for watching I'd love to know what you think um, how you raise your seedlings at home do you struggle with a lack of windowsill space like I do <laughs> um, yeah it'd be great to hear from you guys um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again real soon